Danny and Drogon's dramatic rescue of Jon Snow and his fellow warriors is one of the most memorable scenes from Season 7 of Game of Thrones. But before that scene came to life, it started here, in a slightly less polished place. Before filming ever began, certain problems had to be solved, like how all the characters would fit on the dragon and what they'd hold to avoid falling off. Also, what does a dragon even look like? Building these mythical creatures from scratch required a combination of elements found in the natural world, like the scales of a lizard, the wings of a bat, and the neck of a T-Rex, all to create this. I built that gigantic thing in this little tiny bedroom. This is Dan Ketcher, the self-proclaimed father of dragons, and he's the man responsible for designing these iconic creatures for one of the biggest shows in television history. The Game of Thrones dragons set a new standard for how these creatures are designed and brought to life. For me, every season, it would go from anywhere from eight weeks to 12 weeks of actually working and, and designing these guys. It all starts with a sketch, like this early drawing of Drogon. But it's not just about sketching. Catcher creates detailed models that he sends to HBO for approval. Models that have to take into account the proportions of the dragons, which grew from tiny to massive during the run of the show, how the creatures would work inside and out, and every single detail down to the individual scales. To do this, Catcher used a program called ZBrush. The first step for creating one of his 3D models is creating the proportions of the creatures using elements called Z-spheres. Before he can think about how the creature will look, he has to create the basic infrastructure for how it will work. Pretty soon, you see the basic building blocks of a dragon. Catcher then creates an internal structure, or skeleton. He lays out bones that will be connected to muscle, establishing the physical dynamics of how this creature will move, and eventually, fly. An understanding of physiology and anatomy is crucial to Catcher's designs, many of which are inspired by real-life animals. In the skeleton itself, I've mixed all these animals together. So you've got bat wings that are in the bones, you've got a bird rib cage. These are neck vertebrae taken from a Tyrannosaurus rex. For his dragon, Catcher combines specific elements of real animals. The scales on the dragon's head look like those of a sun gazer lizard, and you'll notice the similarities between the scales on its chest and the feathers on the chest of an eagle. Catcher puts his inspiration to work in the most time-consuming part of the process, creating and refining the extremely detailed features of the dragon's anatomy, like its teeth and its scales. Although ZBrush has tools that allow artists to repeat the patterns of the scales, thus saving time, Catcher meticulously designs every scale himself to avoid the appearance of artificiality. Once the detailed model is complete in ZBrush, Catcher exports a 2D image to perform a paintover for an image that's submitted to producers for approval. But the initial design is only the beginning. Catcher would be given the storyline, which would determine specific modifications that needed to be made for each dragon, like in that scene in season seven. So I had to show like, all right, well, here's how all the guys can hold on to the scales on Drogon's back to eventually be pulled away. So that's like part of the design process. Catcher exports his files from ZBrush and sends them to visual effects companies, who import the files into programs like Maya and 3D Studio Max to begin rigging and animating the creatures that you see come to life on screen. The technology now is at the point where really, if you can conceive of it, you can make it. So, how do you get a job designing dragons? I was working on a show called Terra Nova with dinosaurs, and a gentleman by the name of Rainer Gombos came in, who happened to be the executive producer for the visual effects for Game of Thrones, and he was looking for a dragon. And it just so happened that I had spent my life making dinosaurs and dragons like for McFarlane toys. Years before getting hired onto Game of Thrones, Catcher worked as a toy maker, designing and sculpting creature figurines for Spawn creator Todd McFarlane's New York-based toy company. I had already had a pretty big portfolio of different dragon works to show them, so I didn't have to do another concept on top of that. They, they just sort of looked at my work and Rainer trusted me and said, we see you know what you're doing, just, just go for it. So that design was always in me. And finally, Game of Thrones just let it come out. Catcher received Emmy recognition for his work on Game of Thrones. Today, he's busy creating creatures for DC shows like The Flash, Titans, and Supergirl. That was the, the design I did for the Ice Dragon, which I had to keep secret for two years before it was ever released. Even my wife did not see that. Because <laughs> everybody was like, especially my wife was like, don't you tell me what happened. Don't show me anything on your computer. I don't want to know until the show comes out. 